What's up, guys? If you're like me, you've probably watched dozens of these pyramid documentaries, and you know they've always got the good clickbait title of "Huge Discovery," you know, "Ancient Secrets Revealed," whatever. <laughs> How is it that after millions of hours produced on pyramids and especially History Channel and things like that? How is it that I'm just now hearing that step pyramids are full of rooms? Did I just Mandela warp here? Um, anybody else having this problem with me here? <laughs> so I just stumbled across this today reading a archaeological article. And they're just talking casual about this off the beaten path, not really tourist attraction place. And I'm sitting here going, yeah, but what about all the rooms? <laughs> so th they had, you know, like three photos in their article, but I managed to find like dozens of these photos. So check it out. So the pyramids with ruins look very similar in style to the Tikal and Guatemala pyramids, pretty slender and tall. And we've all seen these, you know, with their tops jutting up out of the forest and everything. But... Here you go. You can see there's a, another one off in the distance, two off in the distance there. But these guys are walking down and in to the structure here. And up here, you can see a little hollow spot. Here's an even better view of it. But you can see, you know, a hallway going to the left and right at what appears to be the basement level because the outside of the completed pyramid would have been coming way up here. I'll show you in a second how each terrace room works, but it looks like there is a basement level passage in the pyramid. And then here's a really good one. You can see the faced stones inside. It looks like probably a limestone, but cut, faced rocks on the inside and then you can see that they're just using the rough pebbles as the filler and then there's a couple doorways but notice how there's the small filler rock up at the top there i'm gonna show you guys how each one of these was built keep in mind that everything we're seeing today was all reconstructed by archaeologists um, i don't know if these were found in better condition than the other ones or what's going on. But we'll get into those here in a minute because everything was absolutely annihilated in this area. But it looks like they just build basically a retaining wall and then backfill the hole inside. And then here they've got their good faced stones. This would have been the first floor of inside rooms out here. And then you can see more backfill there in the center. So basically they'd step up and it'd just be one floor of a room so that they didn't have to support the weight of all the other floors going up. It just kept stepping in. And the ceiling of the first floor would only have to support the weight of the walkway on the second floor. Stone can't support weight when it's spanning a long distance. That's why even today... You have these big stone buildings with a wooden roof, like Notre Dame Cathedral. But why is it after all of this time, I've never seen any doorway, any window opening on any of the step pyramids? Now, I don't know the location of this one, anything about this photograph. I just found it on Pinterest. But you can see, again, down on the bottom right, you have big megalithic, in this case, they just look way bigger stones than in that last picture. But large cut stones with an opening in there going to the right and a hallway hollow area going up under the stairs. But you definitely have cut stone inside with the fill stone on top, which makes me wonder if in this case, this is a 100% archeological reconstruction. And if you've never seen what kind of shape these were found in, you're about to be in for a little bit of an awakening. Keep in mind, 
to call was officially discovered in the 1840s, and it wasn't opened to the public since the 1960s, since UNESCO got involved. And I've pointed out for a long time that every UNESCO World Heritage Site around the world is the scene of a major accident. They are literally parading us around the graveyard of our ancestors. But don't get me wrong, I'd go to any of these in a heartbeat if I had the opportunity. Okay, so this is what kind of shape it was actually found in. And you can tell from the trees in the background that this has already been cleared a lot. You know, they've come in and cut all the timber out of the way. Oh, here you go. Here's what it looked like in 1957. So they let it sit for a while. The official story on all of this is that you get cultural layers that build up a little bit over time. And no, this is the scene of a tsunami. You can see in this one, it's just absolutely buried into the hillside and it kind of makes you wonder if this isn't the reason that they <laughs> built all of these in the first place and for every one of these sites that are exposed there are hundreds if not thousands for each one of those that are completely buried under the ground the only way that they're now discovering them is with lidar and what used to take thousands of hours and a case of typhoid fever and malaria to go explore, they can now just sit around and look on their computers. They had a plane fly over and map out this whole area. And guys, they are just finding millions and millions of people's domiciles buried under the ground down through the jungle. And some of it's not even hidden in the jungle. I mean, this just looks like hills out through a field. You would never know. Like, Gobekli Tepe was a farmer digging in his field, and he found a whole stone city down underneath. Same scenario. And now we're talking step pyramids with freaking steam baths on the inside. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Here we have just some average guy's house all caked in mud and he had a calendar on the wall and it has four different dates each one of them being about ranging from like 900 years up to like 3,000 years now what the hell could be so important you're going to set an alarm 3,000 years in advance to make sure you're ready for whatever is happening on that day I'm a lot more up on my Inca folklore than Mayan, which I don't think they have any. The Incas were still alive and are still alive to this day. But they would have called this a Pachacuti, which basically translate to it's either the world turns upside down or the world turns inside out. Now, just like in Europe, apparently the Americas had their dark ages too because we had the Maya that supposedly thrived from whatever they say, 2500 BC to about 900 AD. And then they die out and pretty much all is quiet. They basically have zero history for this time. And then you have the full fledged Aztec culture that are, is obviously just the remnants of the culture that came before them. Because like Teotihuacan, the Aztecs said, yeah, we don't even know who built that. There was a really interesting mural that was found in that guy's house that I was showing earlier. They show an Aztec there in the middle. And then to the left, you can obviously see that they're portraying a black man. And to the right, it seems like he's offering a gift to, again, a, a black man or something. And that's what they said that this was it looks kind of like a pickaxe in his right hand his left hand looks kind of like claws i don't know what's going on but this they're obviously portraying a black person there is even an inscription on the wall that says younger brother obsidian and these guys being the typical academics that they are they have to explain it away because they insist that all dark complected people are from Africa, and they say that the orange person, the Mayan-looking person, 
is the one that's called Younger Brother Obsidian. They refuse to acknowledge other than to say that, yes, there are figures that are painted in black, but they won't go any further on that. So if the inscription really is talking about the orange man being younger brother Obsidian, then I would almost look at that as them saying that they're a younger brother, younger race, you know, something along those lines. And it just makes me think of the Olmec heads that distinctly look like what we would now call African features. And once you, again, you find the heads buried down in four to five feet of mud here. Now, this actually does look like a Lus layer. A Lus is L-O-E-S-S. -S. And what it is, is a layer of fine silt from a, a flood, an extreme flooding catastrophe. And geologists know where all of these are. If you've ever got any questions about what's a real mud flood and what's YouTube lore, go look for the Lus layers. Because when you're digging down, you can tell if there's been plant life growing in each of the layers or if it's just completely jumbled up flood debris and silt. The Mississippi Valley actually has about a 60 foot deep layer of lust. That means that the whole valley was filled in in a dramatic flood. And no, it wasn't 200 years ago because on top of that layer, you have all the archaeological remains of Poverty Point and all kinds of Native American sites there, going all the way up to Serpent Mound in Ohio. There's hundreds of years of archaeological evidence on top of the flood sediment layer that we have in North America, in spite of what a lot of people on YouTube like to say. If they were to actually study the geology and archaeology, they would discover that, yeah, on top of the known flood layers that we have, all around the world, we have a lot of archaeological level evidence on top of it. And no, we don't have a huge lust layer outside of every major city where they just dug it out. Anything hitting with that destructive of a force to leave that much sediment on top would not leave buildings level to where you can just clean them out and keep going. Anyway, uh, this one... They called this one the Mayan Temple of a Thousand Columns or something. But that looks like the basement of what we're looking at in the background, just another pyramid. So I don't know if what goes for one goes for all of them, but this one definitely looks like they were building a basement in there. And here's a couple aerial views, and you can just see that it's full of rooms. So anyway, this one just kind of blew me away. I've never seen this, heard of this at all. And then all of a sudden I find dozens of pictures of rooms inside of the step pyramids. So I hope you enjoyed. See you on the next one.